Hey, what's going on? It's Tim Castleman here with you. Another edition of the Two Drink Tim podcast. Thanks so much for paying attention. And right off the bat, I have to say this. Fuck Facebook, okay? Fuck them. They are the worst way to start your day. If you are in this trap that I am in, get out of it because I have, as of today, ejected from it. What I like to do is get up in the morning, lay in bed for a little while, right? And uh, and immediately grab my phone, start checking emails, which is terrible. You should never do that because that impacts your day. And then when I get done getting myself good and pissed off there, uh, I just go over to Facebook and I just, you know, it's ridiculous. First of all, um, you know, I've got thousands of people that are my friends that I've never met. Uh, But Facebook is just ridiculous. The people on there just are proof that you just should not be allowed to live and breathe, right? That should not be a guaranteed right for some people in this world. Like, but particularly like the people that are always going on these political rants or these religious rants. And it's, I'm not against having an opinion. Obviously I like to have opinion on things when it comes to it. But what I am against is people that just continue to like jackhammer down their own, their own opinion, their own thought process, their own beliefs on other people, expecting them to change and then shocked when that doesn't happen. Let me ask you a question. Have you ever gotten into a huge debate about religion, politics, abortion, drugs, and had somebody change their mind by the end of it? Or did you both just kind of hold on to your little nuggets of truth that you believe and think that are, are the best and right practices and both piss each other off in the process? Chances are it's option two, right? But yet these people do it. And it's like, look, you know, people are like, oh, fuck Obama. He's the worst president in the world. It's like, why don't you take that shitty job for four years, right? Why don't you like get three hours of sleep at night, get hammered by all the people have people in Congress that just don't want to fucking work with you. And they're like, no, 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 that would help the American people, but fuck them, not because we don't like them, but because we don't like you. And, and I'll say that the same on either side. Republican, Democrat, it doesn't matter. Here's the truth of the matter for me. I don't give a shit what your religious beliefs are. I don't give a shit what your political beliefs are. I don't care. And you know why? Because whether you believe in a god or a pope or Buddha or that, you know, it's all imaginary and made up, that has no impact on my business. Now, the only way it would have an impact on my business is if I was like a Rush Limbaugh type where I was like, you know, God bless America, uh, apple pie, uh, Oxycontin, and baseball forever. Like, that's the only time that it would really impact my life. But if it doesn't, there's no point in constantly jackhammering people with your opinion. And The other thing is there's no point in arguing about it because, again, how many times have you ever gone out there and seen people been like, you know, Tim, I was was a baby-killing, Jesus-loving, jihad-swearing, you know, George W. Bush supporter, but now you've turned me into a tree-hugging hippie just like the rest of you. Never going to happen. So, fuck Facebook. Fuck it. And, and the reason I say fuck Facebook is it's a great place to go. It's a great place to hang. But if you're like me and you got shit to do and you are emotionally swayed easily, meaning if something pisses you off, it throws you off your game, do not put yourself in situations where you're going to have shit like that crammed down your throat like some Craigslist call girl. Okay? That's all I'm saying. That's all I'm saying, ladies and gentlemen. And as a nice and perfectly timed segue, let's talk about something completely unrelated to Obama, Jesus, or Buddha, and that is finding a way to win while doing your own thing. And I'm going to share some really embarrassing, I consider it kind of embarrassing. Uh, It's probably no big deal in your eyes, but I'm going to share with you an embarrassing personal story to kind of drive this point home. Uh, And some of you may think less of me after I tell you this story. And if you do, that's your right. And I'm sorry that my truth annoys you, okay? But based on feedback that I've gotten from listeners, you guys seem to really uh, respond when, uh, one, I tell self deprecating stories about myself and two when I kind of speak from the heart more than like well today children we're gonna learn a b and c so let's just get right into it okay and here here's the deal back in October 2011 I spoke at the warrior forum event and gave probably one of my best presentations ever Uh, I was going to do a presentation on product creation uh, but I showed up to find the previous two people in front of me had given similar speeches so I scrapped it I scrapped it with 20 minutes to go okay Um, I completely just was like oh you know what fuck it I'm just gonna make a new presentation with 20 minutes to go because who doesn't do that and uh, I decided to do that I hadn't eaten in 24 hours because it was one of 
those fly in, fly out things. And here's the best part, right? I decided to drink heavily during the presentation. So Adam uh, Schneller Nolan uh, had a bottle of whiskey or something. I don't remember. He had something that was alcoholic and cold. And he poured me a big old glass of it. And I proceeded to drink it while I was on stage. And I think I had a Snickers bar in me, right? And uh, at the time, I was doing the Atkins diet. So that was like, not only was it like my first carb, but it was like my first drink in forever. So long story short, I proceeded to get bombed pretty much by the end of my talk when I watch it and you can like hear me just being like holy shit I am drunk like so it was a great talk because it was from the heart much like these podcasts I was like fuck anybody that gets offended I'm just gonna be me I'm gonna do me I'm gonna say me and if people like it great if they don't that's fine. So we have a great time. I meet some amazing people. Um, I, I meet someone that, uh, you know, still has an impact on my life to this day. And we're, we're just having a great weekend. And I was scheduled to go out that night with a, with a, a buddy of mine. We were going to go out. And I said, you know what, dude, let's spend the night. Let's spend the night and let's uh, just go home tomorrow. And he's like, okay, sure, whatever. So one of the guys pulls me in the side room. He's like, hey, man, come up uh, to room whatever, right, room 420. And uh, we're going to smoke a little marijuana. And I'm like, what? I'm like, dude, I'm, I'm 30 years old. I've never done that. Like, I don't do drugs. You know, I take like half a baby aspirin. I have the occasional drink, but that's, that's it. I'm a good boy. You know, I, I, you know, I didn't break any of the cardinal sins growing up, but I was like, well, you know, when in North Carolina, do as the North Carolinas do and uh, partake. So for the very first time at like age 30, 31, I can't remember um, because of the drug use, I'm sure. Um, I smoke weed for the very first time. And it was interesting because I had been always taught in my life that drugs were a bad thing. They were a terrible thing. You shouldn't smoke them. If you do, you're a loser. If you do, um, no one will respect you and blah, 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 blah. And I get done with the first joint, right? And I'm like, okay, well, I haven't turned into Satan yet. You know, like I'm not a terrible person. Uh, you know, I didn't X, I didn't Y. All, all the stuff that I was told never hasn't happened yet. It's not coming true. It's like maybe I'm, I won't immediately go to hell and maybe, just maybe, things are okay. And in a lot of ways, just being frank, right? It reminded me of like sex. I was like, you got to wait till you uh, have uh, sex till you're married. And, you know, God wants it that way. And, you know, it's a sacred vow between this and this and that. Blah, blah, blah. And then I remember like the first time I, I had sex when I was in the military, I was like, that's it? Like, that's what I waited all this time for? Like, I'm just saying, all, all I'm saying is this, okay? If they invent a time machine, I'm going back to high school and every girl that I was like, no, 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 no. I respect you too much. I want to wait. I'm fucking. That's all I'm saying. Time machine, high school, pussy galore. All right. So getting back on track of this wonderful, embarrassing story. So I, I, I smoke weed the first time. I, I enjoy it. I mean, I don't hate it. How could you? I've never had anyone that's like, man, you know what? I hate smoking weed. Makes me all giggly and hungry and relaxed and calm. So I go back home and I like tell a couple buddies, I'm like, hey, Timmy Castleman smoked a little J.O., you know, I was there. And they're like, oh, dude, that's so interesting because we just started smoking. And long story short, my, my circle of friends uh, here had just picked up the same habit, the habit that apparently I had in North Carolina. And what proceeds from that, okay, is until present day, and I want to be clear, okay, this is not a dare commercial, this is not a drug, uh, anti drugs are bad commercial, That it isn't any of that, okay, if you want to smoke a little weed to relax and calm down like I do, that that's your own right, you let your own freak flag fry, okay, and I will state uh, publicly that that's the only drug I've ever done, that's the only drug I ever plan on doing, because all the other drugs scare the shit out of me. For instance, one time, a buddy of mine was like, hey, you know, I've heard about this drug ecstasy we should maybe think about it and I was like well you know as a good nerd let me do my research so I do my research on it and they have something no shit it's like in the Wikipedia so it's got to be true called Suicide Tuesday because for you non-drug users what happens is it releases all your dopamines it, it, that's why it's so euphoric and it feels amazing and awesome and wonderful that, that's awesome. That's great. Except now your body has no dopamines to basically perk itself up and make itself happy. So for a lot of people, they get real dark the next two or three days after the fact that they try it. So with that, uh, you know, which leads to enough suicides for them to come up with a nickname called Suicide Tuesday. No thank you. Not interested. Okay. So from that day in 2011 till present day, I have been a regular user of the 420 substance known as marijuana. 
okay? But I started really thinking about this a, a month or two ago, and I started thinking about why I was using, right? And why I continue to smoke marijuana when it's clearly not good for me. As far as like, you know, I went from like 170 to like 230. Yeah, put that on you. Now, I also stopped working out and stopped the, the healthy eating I was on, right? Got majorly depressed, um, broke up a business partnership, right? And, and it's gone through incredible emotional um, and physical turmoil at the time. So it's not like, oh, man, it's because I smoked I gained all this weight. It's because all of these things happened that that, uh, that was the end result, okay? So from 2012 till now, been a regular user and I started thinking like, well, what, what is it that I want or why is it that I'm using it? Well, one, obviously, um, you know, I was in a peer group that was using it. So that helped. Okay. Two, I don't care what anybody says. Weed opens more doors for me than it's closed. Like, here's a little tip. If you're going to go to an event and you're like, man, how do I get backstage with all the speakers and hang out? All right. Let it be known that you're the guy that has the supply or girl. Okay. And the reason for that is very simple. Okay, I was shocked and amazed. Like I, I really did. I was like, man, the only people that use drugs are losers because that's how I was raised, right? And brainwashed from a child that drug users equate losers. But it was interesting to see how many people higher up and higher up and higher up. We're talking six, seven, even eight figure earners that I've met that that smoke weed. I, I'll tell you this: if I ever want to go backstage at a concert, all I gotta let them know is, "Hey, I know a guy. I got a guy. I am that guy." And before you know it, I'm back in the green room, literally and figuratively. So again, this isn't like a dare commercial. This isn't a you shouldn't do this commercial. It's like you know, listen to my message beyond that because the flip side of it is you do get judged right like i had a friend um i thought he was a friend and he was like oh you, you do drugs you're a loser and i'm like um i'm 31 years old i paid off my house uh, i make six figures a year i got six figures in cash uh what are you doing there working at frito-lay delivering chips for and you're gonna judge me but it does happen okay so my whole point is when i started looking at why i was doing this and a lot of it was to cover a lot of things up. Like I was in a business partnership that I wanted out of because we were losing money too similar and the guy just flat out refused to work. Plus, despite me thinking he actually had a name in internet marketing, he didn't, right? And, and I know that because he continues to use my JV contacts to this day and I keep calling his one JV contact, but the number's disconnected at the homeless shelter, right? So... I was using it to mask a lot of things like a failed business partnership, right? Um, a lot of personal shit that was going on in my life that was really bugging and impacting me um, and really just having to deal with the whole fallout from that. But the other reason, if I'm being dead honest, that and this is what I really want you to take away from today's uh, dare lesson, right? That I was using is because I knew so many of my friends who were successful, highly functioning potheads. And I kept thinking, well, I want to get to that point, right? Well, I want to get to the point where I can, you know, do a rip off a bong or smoke a joint or hit the vape and go be productive and go work and be successful and be looked upon and sought upon for that. For instance, my friend Brad Gross, right? He, he has a book called The Chronic Marketer. He is very open and adamant about his weed smoking. I will be talking to him. He will be getting high and he will be dropping knowledge and just brilliant, just a brilliant fucking guy. And I thought, okay, well, let's get to that point instead of being the stupid retarded high guy that we are now, that's like, I just want cheeseburgers and a hug, right? So uh, my thought, and as I say this out loud, I understand how ridiculous it's going to sound because it sounds ridiculous to even say it. But my thought was, well, if I just catch up to these guys, right, then I'll, then I'll reach Nirvana. So if I just do what they do, then I'll get the same result. And I was like, well, look, these guys have been smoking since they're 14. I'm 30. I got 15 years to catch up. Uh, instead of one joint, let's just get two going. Then let's get three. Let's get four. And I never did it to that level. But my point was I kept trying to get the same result they were getting, doing the same thing they were doing. And the truth of the matter is I'll never be able to get that result. And that's okay. You see, in our life, we have so many ladders of ascension that we think we have to climb. 
Well, I got to go to school. I got to graduate high school. I got to get a college degree. Now it's I got to get my master's. Now I got to get my PhD. Then I got to go get this continuing education. Then I got to do this or do that. You know, and we, we think we have to. Well, I have to cut my own grass. You don't. I have to cook my own food. You don't. I have to clean my own house. You don't. Right. Or I just won't be a good husband or, you know, ladies, whatever it is that you guys go through. I have a penis. So I'm not really prone to speak on that. OK, but but you believe because you see other people achieving that, that you have to do the same thing. And the truth of the matter is you don't. And the bigger truth of the matter is you shouldn't let that bother you. See, it bothered me. It bothered me that I could not smoke pot and be as alert, alive, driven, focused as my friends who could. And I was like, man, I just, you know, if I smoke more, I'll get to that point faster. Like my brain will equalize. And, and guess what? It never freaking happened. So what I had to do was I had to adjust to know my limitations and what worked best for me. So instead of being like, hey, you know what? I'm going to wake up. I'm going to smoke a joint and be bombed through this entire event. Maybe it's like, hey, you know what? Maybe it's a nighttime snack, like right before you go to bed. Maybe it's not an everyday thing. Maybe it's something you take a couple months off periodically from. And I found a way to win while doing my own thing. So let's translate this horribly embarrassing lesson, right, personally, to professional. And I'll give an example, and I haven't cleared it with him, so if, I hope he doesn't get too mad. Um, but, you know, I've got a friend by the name of uh, Ben Atkins, okay? He is a Facebook marketer and probably, I'd say top three, I don't know, you know, top three on the imaginary list that I just made up of Facebook marketers. The guy came on the scene after me. Okay, and has blown it up. Last year he did, you know, seven figures. This year he's already done seven figures. This guy continues to just get bigger and bigger. And my prediction is he will continue to do so. Okay. He's got a huge staff of like seven last time I talked to him. You know, he, he, I mean, he just does everything on a different level. And that works for him. But if I ever tried to compete on his level, I would get destroyed. Okay. So if I, and let me, let me explain what I mean. If I ever came out and was like, listen, everybody, I'm like Dr. Ben Atkins, but I only make a half a million instead of like three million. I'm going to get destroyed there. I come out and I'm like, hey, here's how I sold two t-shirts two on Teespring. Everyone's like, um, yeah, I just sold 5,000 t-shirts and paid off a whole village in the Philippines uh, to do so. Okay, I lose. So if I go head to head with him, I'm going to lose. What I have to do and what you have to do is find a way to win while doing your own thing. So this week we released our very first internet marketing training. Okay, for those of you curious, tripwiretraining.com. Yes, tripwiretraining.com, you can check it out there. And basically, this is going to be the first in a long series of internet marketing products that I put out there that allow me to win while doing my own thing. Because here's the truth, okay? While I don't make millions of dollars and I don't have a staff of seven and I don't, you know, give the appearance of winning at everything that I touch, what I do have is a successful and strong six-figure business with a small and manageable staff with a lifestyle that most people would dream of. That's the way that I win. And here's the other thing. People naturally gravitate towards those people they know, like, and trust, which we've all heard a million times. But there are a lot of people out there that don't want to do what Ben does. I don't want to do what Ben does. I don't want to have a staff of seven people I got to manage. I don't want to have a payroll, and I don't know what his payroll is, but I'm going to guess maybe $30,000 a month. I don't want to have to screw with that. I don't want to have to have someone in the Philippines that I got to worry about a typhoon rolling through their village and wiping out their life. I don't want to win that way. I can't win that way. I'm not set up to win that way. And that's okay. I just have to find a different way to win. So for me, it's going a smaller staff, more, more lethal and precise than having this big conglomerate corporation. Now here's the wag, right? And this is the thing I always have to remind myself. If you're not willing to put in the work like they are, you can't get upset when you're not getting the results that they do. Meaning, well, Ben makes, you know, 600 kajillion dollars per year and has a staff of seven people. You know, how can I only make one kajillion dollars and have a staff of three? Well, have you done what he did? No, right? Or like my favorite is like the, 
the guy who gets the personal trainer and the trainer's like, look, we're going to work out three times a week and we got to eat healthy and you got to drink a protein shake and a salad and a this and a that. And he's like, yeah, listen, I'm just going to have pizza every day and work out one time a week. And then six weeks later, he stops. He's like, what the fuck, man? Why I ain't losing no weight? It's like, well, you didn't do the plan we outlined, so you're not going to get the results I described. How that translates to you is, and how it translates to me is, I can't get upset that I'm not making $3 million a year if I'm not willing to do the work that that guy is. Because what a lot of people don't see is that while I'm up enjoying 420 time, right, or watching a movie or talking to a buddy uh, online, Ben's working. His staff's working. They're hustling. They're always moving forward. Move forward, 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 more, 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 more. They're always moving forward. That's great. That's awesome. I took the entire month of June pretty much off. And it reflected that in my business numbers when I talked to my accountant. But you know what? I don't have a huge staff. Okay? I don't have a huge overhead. So I get to do that. That's a win for me where it wouldn't be for him. So I just have to find the people that want more of a lifestyle business or a business like similar to mine than people that want Ben's business where they want to have a huge freaking staff and make a bunch of money and you know work 20 hours a day and whatever. So you got to find a way to win that allows you to do your own thing. And you have to understand that if you do your own thing, you can't get upset when you don't get the same results. Just because he's making $3 million doesn't mean you're any less successful making 300000 It just means you're doing it your own way. Because I will tell you from personal experience, there's nothing worse than trying to put on airs or trying to do it some way else or some way that you think it needs to be done, only to find out that you hate that way. You know, well, I gotta do this huge product launch, I gotta give away all this money, I gotta do X, I gotta do Y, I gotta do Z. They do it, and then they get a horrible result, or worse, they get a great result, but they hate the process they have to go through, and they're like, ah, oh, man, this just isn't for me. It's okay if something isn't for you. I never shame anybody who's like, ah, oh, man, I don't do drugs. That's great, that's awesome. Just like I don't shame anybody that's like, hey, I like to, you know, get high from time to time. It's their own thing. It's their own path. And they're trying to find a way to win. And here's the other benefit. Uh, the other benefit of doing it your way is a lot of times you stand out from the marketplace. And you have a great story. And that's the thing they can never take away from you. And it's taken me years to realize that. They can do a lot of things to me. Okay? They can call me names. They can talk bad or behind my back. They can X, Y, you know. Whatever they want to do. But they can't ever take away the story that I have to share with other people. There are a lot of podcasts out there in the world. But there's never going to be another or similar Two Drink Tim podcast like mine. One, because I won't be doing it, right? And two, because it's me. It's my branding. It's my story. This is my way to win. You know, I'm not out there hustling, trying to get 500 reviews for this thing, right? I'm not doing like Tim Ferriss recently did where he's like, I'm not going to release another podcast until we get 750 reviews. I don't want to do that crap. I don't want to hustle like that. I mean, that's just the bottom line. I don't want to hustle and have to work my ass off to get this podcast professionally done, you know, with people like, well, you need to get an intro. You need to, you know, have a someone on there and interview you. You need to have, you need, you need. It's like, no, I don't. I'm going to make my success my way, and if it's successful, great. And if it's not, that's fine because at least I did things my way like Sinatra. So what I'll tell you is if you see someone out there doing something and you'd like to achieve that result, chances are, there are one, there's different ways to get there, okay, not not to... Uh, you know, all roads lead to Mecca, so to speak. And two, it's okay to do things differently. Now, if you're a totally beginner, then I recommend that you do it the way it's laid out first because there's nothing more frustrating as a product creator. I'm like, here, do these five steps and you'll have success. And someone comes and goes, hey, I did steps one, three, and five, and I wasn't successful. And they're like, I'm like, yeah, well, you didn't do two or four. Like, yeah, I didn't feel like doing that. It's like, no, 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 no. Do it first the way it's laid out, then make a decision. You see, back in the launch heydays, I, I did a big launch, or what I considered a big launch. We did everything we were supposed to do. Made all the videos, made them funny, had JV prizes, gave a ton of money away, launched it, bam. Sold a couple thousand units. Not as good as other people, not terrible. But what I decided was, hey, you know what, if I just spent the money that I just spent on this JV 
nonsense and did something different or my own way or this way or that way, then you know what? I probably could get a similar result. So maybe instead of 3,000 sales, I only get 1,500 or 2,000, but it's a lot less stress and it is a lot easier on me, my staff, and being able to provide. I call those low-key launches. And we do teach that, and I will be teaching that as well, where we basically start to fire, and then we let affiliates come stoke it when they're ready. So the great thing is this. There are many roads that lead to Mecca. Just like in the wheat example, if you try it, like everyone says to try it, and it doesn't work for you, there's no harm or shame or saying, hey, this doesn't work for me. I want to find a different way to win. And ultimately, what you want to do is find a way to win while doing your own thing. Because I, you know, uh, another personally embarrassing story, after I got divorced, I had no game, okay? I, I married the first girl that said yes, okay? And I also married, like, the first girl that I had a serious relationship in, which I do not recommend personally. So I was like, ah, I got no game. And a buddy of mine was like, hey, you got to try this, uh, this uh, Evan Pagan David D'Angelo character. Uh, you got to try him out, man. He's pretty awesome. So I like listen to his CDs. Back in the day when they had CDs, kids, for you listening at 500 years in the future, CDs were these little discs that you put into car players that got scratched every time you went over a fucking bump. So long story short, right? I, I, I start listening to these CDs. You're like, oh, you got to be cocky and funny and you got to do this and you got to do that and you got to do this and got to do that. So I try it, right? I'm like, okay, I got to be a fancy dresser. Let me go get a whole new wardrobe, right? Oh, I got to, I got to get a different car. Oh, I gotta, I gotta do all the things he says I do. I go out, I try it, I hate it. I gotta pretend to be someone I'm not, right? I'm like, man, I really want to call that girl, but this imaginary book that has no real impact on my life says I gotta wait three days to call her. You know, oh man, I really care about this girl, but I can't tell her I care about her because then she'll think that I'm a, a frustrated chump or a weakling, and then she'll, you know, and. Don't get me wrong. Those CDs had a lot of positive impacts on my life, but I tried it and it wasn't for me. And after about four or five horrible dates, I, I just had a little talk with myself and I said, self, first of all, stop playing with yourself so much. Stop touching it. It's not going to fall off. Okay. And number two is like, let's just be us and I'm just going to be me and I'm just going to be real. And if I want to call a girl, I'm going to call a girl. And if I want to be needy and emotional, I'll be needy and emotional. And if she doesn't like that now, she sure as hell isn't going to like it later when that turns out to be the quote unquote real me. And when I did that and I stopped stressing so much about, well, God, I, you know, I got to have the perfect date. And it's got to be planned out and we have to do this. And, you know, I got to have everything choreographed. And if there, if she's late, if I'm late, if the waiter's rude, if any, all this thing could just collapse any time. And I was like, you know what? Fuck it. I'm going to take this girl to a bar. We're going to do some shots of tequila. We're going to loosen up. We're going to have some fun and enjoy it. It became more enjoyable for everybody. It became more relaxing for me and it became more relaxing for the dates. And as a result, I had a higher level of success with the ladies. I became what they call in the streets, the greatest of all time, the goat. Okay, that may or may not be true. But I did find someone that ended up loving me for who I was and who I am. And to this day, I'm still that person. So there's not a huge change. Like, wow, I remember when you used to cook and clean all the time. Then we got married. And now suddenly the only thing you're cooking and cleaning out is the fridge with your mouth. Like, what's going on? That's because I found a way to win while doing my own thing. And sure, it's not what other people, right? I didn't date a supermodel like Evan promised I would. I didn't have sex on the first date every time like Ross Jeffrey said I would. You know, I couldn't just command a woman's attention by saying, hey, like some tool bag told me back in the day. But what I did find was a relationship that was meaningful to me and turned out to be one of the best relationships I've ever been involved in, in my entire life. So don't let other people's ideals of success let you stray from yours or make you think that you're doing it wrong by not doing it that way. Because here's the other thing. And this is another reason why I, I, I hate Facebook. Facebook is a highlight reel of our life. It's when everything's perfect most of the time. It's when everything's great. It's, you know, here's me on vacation, eating fancy food, out at the club, right? Making millions of dollars, slaying, ta whatever. It's not the, holy shit, what am I doing with my life? Oh my God, I'm completely and totally alone. People only like me because of my money, right? Inside, I'm hurting. 
I, you know, but outside I have this positive, you know, well, everything's great and awesome and I got robbed today, but it's okay because YOLO, you know, they must have really needed my CD player because they just ripped it right out of the fucking deck, right? It's not that. It's like, well, everything's going good. We see one side of it. We don't see the people that have relationships in trouble, that have money problems. That So that person that you're lusting after or the person that you think, oh, I really want to be like that person, chances are if you scoop below the surface and it doesn't have to be that far, you realize that they got their own problems that you just don't see because they cast everything in this perfect light. So a lot of the people that say, oh, you need to do this, and then you do that, and then you realize it's a nightmare, and then they realize it's a nightmare, that's a tough thing. Okay, I haven't asked his permission. Hopefully he doesn't get upset with me. If he does, you know, we'll, we'll have a Battlestar Galactica fight to the death or something like that. But about two years ago, back when I was lost and searching for, you know, a place to, to drop anchor, I bought a report from Jason Parker. It was like the 2013 internet marketing report for the year, whatever, it was his blueprint for the year. And one of the things he talked about was, hey man, you always gotta be launching. You always gotta be putting products out. You always, always, always gotta do that. And I'm like, that sounds amazing. I'll do that, that's great. And then guess what happened? I got burnt the fuck out. Because every week I was having to come up with a new offer and it was like, well, what can I scrape off the bottom of my fucking shoe to sell? Because you know, according to this report, I gotta, I gotta do this. Well, guess what? I wasn't the only one who had that same problem. You know who else had that problem? Jason Parker did. And don't get me wrong, I'm not bad-mouthing Jason in any form or fashion. That guy is wickedly smart. I buy everything he puts out, and he does an amazing job, and I truly do consider him, right, a close friend in the industry. What I'm trying to share with you is he laid out a blueprint. I followed it step by step. It didn't work for me, and it turns out it didn't work for him, but that spawned the genesis of the new business that I created in August of 2013 that's led me to my most profitable year ever. Doing things my way, the way I want to do them, in congruency with what I am comfortable with and the lifestyle that I want to lead in terms of number of staff, hours worked, so on and so forth. And that's part of what I'm going to be sharing Wednesday night at the tripwiretraining.com. It is a paid training. It's paid because I'm not going to, uh, you know, go on there for 20 minutes and then pitch you something. I'm going to give you real relevant content that you can use in your business. And I'm going to talk a lot about the story that I just shared with you, probably minus all the dope references. Above all, what I want you to take away from this week and our short time together is this. You don't have to do it the way that everybody else says that you have to do it. Now, you got to understand, you may not get the results, you may not get as good. Hell, you may even get better results than what everybody else is saying. But the key and the fact for you to do is you got to do something. You got to find a way to win with what you have while you're doing your own thing, being happy and content in life. And if you do that, then the truth of the matter is you're the real winner, no matter what anybody else says or thinks. So thanks so much for hanging out with me on this edition of the Two Drink Tim podcast. I hope you appreciate it. If you did, if you'd leave me a review or shoot me a PM, let me know if you guys like these crazy stories that I uh, share with you. I'm always like, like I was writing the outline for the show and I got two lines into it. I was like, you know what? I'm not doing an outline today. I'm just going to speak from the heart. So hopefully you guys appreciate it. Uh, again, thanks so much for listening and I'll catch you on the next one.